Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, improvisation with a um, uh, spray chalk and blender. So I'm gonna make something that looks uh, like this. Um, if you if you guess how you create something like this, um, you might think, okay, that's maybe like um, maybe you're using like a bunch of objects like um, particle instancer and you might actually use like a remesh um, that's actually possible as well but here I'm actually um, they're using spread chalk add-on this is um, all procedural there are exactly around 2000 objects here and then for each object I'm using uh, one of blender uh, spread chalk um, nodes called rounded boxes I haven't looked at rounded box boxes um, in details until recently and I just realized uh, this node has a lot um, to um, inside it and here for every boxes they are actually different and this is actually super easy to create and then if we render it out um, with the rounded edges it look it looks something like this so it's quite nice graphically and I'm using a uh, blender 2.78 B and when I render this it's a lot a lot faster um, and I think that's great I'm using Blender Cycles for this and then I, I noticed that in this version whenever it's rendering like a blank background it's no longer rendering like super slowly but it just ignore the blank it's just gonna render it super quickly if it's a like black background it's much more efficient and a lot faster especially if you have GPU I'm just using CPU and this takes uh, only a few minutes okay just uh, let's get started file save as this is gonna be spread chalk rounded boxes compositing and okay let's just get started we have empty 3d view I'm gonna turn on outliner so we have nothing in the in the in the view uh, but soon we're gonna have like uh, hundreds or thousands of objects I'm gonna use this rounded box view uh, viewer draw so we're gonna test this uh, node first this is always the first thing you want to do with every like a uh, generators kind of node try to figure it out uh, the inputs and the outputs. If you don't don't uh, don't know exactly what it's doing, you can go to online help or offline help. Offline help is uh, just text based. Online have some some images. Sometimes you have like a JSON example as well. So let's try this. So by default, it looks like it's generating like a spherical based on a box. If we reduce the radius until it gets really small, you get like a cube if you have just a little bit of rounded it's you have like a this nice um, rounded box so that's what rendered box does and by default is it has arc division of four you can reduce that until you have maybe just one or two let's have this um, vector size division type if I turn on the line you can actually see the division uh, no, by default you can't really see it unless you increase the size, I believe. So, if I increase this box a little bit bigger, and now if I increase the linear deficiency, I believe we should start to see some deficiency. Um, if we can't see anything, I, I think we need to change the deficient type to... Okay, 2. So zero, one, two. So I think zero try to get rid of an unnecessary division, but sometimes you do want this kind of divisions, especially if you want to have this kind of effects that I did. When I render this, it looks like a Tetris, um, you know, Tetris game. It has like this a uh, cube box. Um, so this is quite nice. I like the wireframe in this one. Um, the rounded box actually generate um, mostly boxes 
uh, but the box itself can be in a random um, size so if I generate like a random box size um, I'm gonna scale it oh okay I change the scale here and then randomize the seed you can see here the boxes are in different shapes um, yeah and the division is really can be, we can control it the linear division right here so we have like a nice rounded edges and then also like some type of division there is this odd axis alignment that uh, I'm not quite sure what this actually does odd axis alignment hmm not quite sure but we're gonna generate like a bunch of these boxes so um, I get prepared you might notice that sometimes we get this kind of result that's because we might have negative value from random vector so in order not to have a negative value we need to be careful and then just use a vector out and vector in and just put a like absolute here math absolute with the absolute we cannot have negative value it's always going to be positive so this should work for us so now whatever uh, seed we give this guy we will never get like a negative value so this is like much cleaner much nicer cool files save as now we're gonna make a bunch of them I'm gonna hide this guy and then I wanna create like a the matrix the matrix transformation for um, each boxes how do I create it um, I know a quick trick that I, I just tested basically if we use plane we can generate a bunch of points right like that we can also center it okay bunch of points you can have as many as you want let's have like um, 8 by 8 so we have 64 in the end we can still control spacing from here and then we want to make some kind of volume um, for the volume we can actually use lerp vector lerp okay and here I will use the plane uh, the points from the plane but for the second points I'm gonna use a um, move and I'm gonna vector in and kind of move this guy up if uh, I'll show you the, the result here so I'm gonna move this up maybe 10 and then multiplier actually multiplier we don't need to care about that we're gonna get the result of vector lerp between the original points and then the one that's being moved so with the lerp you, you see vector 0 and 1 is kind of animating the points you can actually do uh, some fancy stuff with this uh, with this guy if we kind of um, okay use a random random number float 0 and 1 and then plug into that guy and then you can actually do that this is super super interesting and yes, that's kind of animations but uh, we're not gonna do that we're actually gonna use the uh, evaluate evaluate and float range will actually generate a bunch of this guy if we set it up to between 0 and 1 see you see now we have like a voxel of points like a matrix uh, this is really cool I like this kind of effects and these points each one of them gonna represent um, transformation points for our boxes um, like I said in a recent version of Spherechalk you can just plug the points into the matrix and it understand it as a position now if we turn on this guy we're gonna have a bunch of boxes now it's calculating how many how many do we have oh maybe we have 
we have 384 of this guy it's quite a lot let's reduce this to 3 by 3 and by 6 3 by 3 is 9 9 times 4 maybe and then increase the spacing maybe a little bit more okay we have this kind of structure and we can also move this okay okay we have this file save as you can have a lot more of course like even 2000 10000 or 100000 depending on your computer ram you can you can do that because it's still kind of like a viewer object in stretch off we have not baked it when we bake it as an object just be careful i think 10000 objects started to slow down blender depending on your memory computer memory if you want to combine them as a single mesh that's going to be a lot faster but it's totally up to you how you want to render it out later you have to think about that uh, we are not using instance every single box is actually uh, a real data a piece of data that's um, being kept in ram it's not like instance objects with instant objects you can have like billions and it's gonna be like a lot still faster but in this case they are real objects so be careful um, so with this we can randomize the scale the count the seed the count actually can come from this uh, transformation we have 36 at the moment you can see here matrix 36 we can do it manually or we just use a list length and a step status code plug this guy in plug that guy in look at the value 36 correct plug this guy into that guy now we have we have randomness already interesting and we can randomize the seed no problem so yeah that's pretty much it actually um what else can we do it's just there's one one thing that I don't quite understand is the this odd axis alignment. What is this exactly doing? There's a division type, of course, if you wanna have less division. This uh, this can be a lot faster if you want to have just a rounded edges. Um this is all of course still procedural so if I make it 5 by 5 25 times 4 now we have 100 of this object 30 by 30 in the spacing and we can also space this out up a little bit more so each one of them is different and I guess I'm pretty happy with this. I want I actually want the division in this case. So yeah, that's uh, looking good. Let's reduce this guy a little bit for now. Just something like this. I want to show you uh, the techniques um, to use with cycles. I'm gonna switch to cycles. I bake this guy this guy out. So we have this real objects, and I will give it a material. This is going to be the material, the cycle material for this guy. Um, of course, they are real objects, you can see. Um, this is all the output mesh. For the cycles material, we can give it a um, random color. Um, one thing that I want to show you that we can also use the modifier here. Wireframe modifier and then with this uh, replace original off. So we can have this um, wireframe. Just generate a second material. Give it a. I'll give it a color black. And let's do a quick test render. So yeah. So we have this um, wireframe. Um, unfortunately, the the rounded 
and just also getting a wireframe if you don't want that wireframe you can just get rid of the rounded um, the rounded edges that's okay for now um, basically we have the wireframe so that's cool we can change the color of course of the wireframe I'll, I'll leave it black for now but I'm gonna switch to the other one I'm gonna give, give it a random color let's see give it a um, near far clockwise clockwise is actually very cool if you give it like color it's kind of doing a interpolations between those two color if you're using clockwise or counterclockwise far near also so plug that in we have that color you can also use object info and just randomize the color now blender has this cool thing um, we know that we only using modifier and color into this guy if we are selecting a single object and then if you use like B and then selecting the rest of the objects it's still selecting this guy the original the one that's been selected it's still active and all we need to do is just control L control L to make links modifiers and then control L to make links of the materials so now each one of them is having the same modifier and the same material so that's really really cool really handy now if we render it out they're all gonna have a different color and then all it looks really cool I like it um, and there is one more thing um, I want to show you it's the I'm using the new blender I think they don't have the film like uh, color space yet linear linear axis SES okay but we, we can kind of uh, use this film film look so this is gonna give like a really nice um, color grading kind of like film Fujifilm pinkish um, Kodak uh, bluish uh, uh, yeah I I found that if you start to use like film color grading your render is gonna look nice um, and then also if you use uh, gradations in the in the in the world um, if you use like the radiant you start to get a, a little bit nicer render let's switch to this world gradient oh gradient is actually black and white at the moment if we use color ramp and then give it a um, uh, like a nicer gradient color blue to yellow yeah it's kind of like a sky kind of effect your render start to look just a little bit nicer as well the the filter is of course currently is very strong from Agva it's very very blue but if you are wanting to do like a stylized motion graphic kind of, kind of render this is um, I think really really nice and if you go back to spread chalk still there this um I call this a rounded box experiment or exploration we have only 16 objects let's boost that up a little bit 5 by 5 by 4 100 objects updated and of course we have not baked it I forgot um, I'm gonna delete all this Uh, leave one and then gonna bake it and uh, I'm making the wrong thing bake this guy let's see
fake. Now we have 100 objects. Select this guy, and then if you want to select the rest, you can also use um, select all by type mesh, and then Control L, Material, Control L, Modifier, Material and Modifier applied to every object now. All you need to do is set up a camera, set up lighting, and then do a render. I'll just do like a preview render. You see it's a lot, uh, it's a lot faster with a BVH um, calculation as well. Um, it's really cool. If my Mac has a proper GPU, this is going to be a lot faster. It's so cool. Um, thanks a lot to Blender Developer for this. And I really like rounded um, rounded box node as well in Spreadshop. It's really cool. This effect, um, you can't do this any easier. Um, yeah, so if, uh, if you are actually... If you don't like... Um, to use rounded, rounded boxes. Um, this guy, if you don't like rounded boxes, you can replace it with any other, um, any other generator actually, like angon or circle, cylinder, sphere. This should be like um, for anyone that's learning Spreadshop add-on for the first time. This kind of workflow should be. Um, I recommend you. To start with this, uh, to understand this uh, data transformation data, and then this uh, mesh data, which consists of vertices and edges, or vertices and polygon, which usually come from a single generator, and you make like a bunch of variations on it. Remember that you can always um, do something with the matrix, like um, do like a different scaling, different rotations, and if, with, even with the position, if you want. You can use just random uh, use random position, and that will work. Um, yeah, so that's uh, I guess pretty much it for this uh, live meeting. Um, hopefully, this is useful. It's like um, basics, but I'm doing it pretty fast, so it's kind of intermediate. Um, if you are like an advanced users, you can do a lot more, and that's gonna be more technical. But I try. With my live noting, it's like basic intermediate levels, um, so everyone can always follow. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for this live noting. If you have any comments, suggestion, question, just let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.